Snap tackle pod time, kids. Let's go. Get ready. Get up. Get hyped. Uh, Mick Schaefer, KSHB 41 here, and Deion Clisoa preps KC. What's going on, Deion, as we head into week nine of the high school football season? Well, I see you're wearing a sweatshirt that says, Our Town, though Mill Valley is not a town. A town. It needs to be. They need to secede from Shawnee. It be annexed. Is that what it's called? Annex themselves? Annexed. Yes, there was a gap between Eastern Shawnee and Western Shawnee. And when one side wants something, the other side maybe doesn't. And I feel it'd be better just just call it Mill Valley. That being said, I hats off to the DeSoto School District because I, you know, in the last year I've been to DeSoto High School a little more with basketball, and then the All Star Game was there, and I've been to Mill Valley plenty of times. DeSoto is a fantastic school with great facilities, the same as Mill Valley. So, really done a good job with both those schools. From what I hear, uh, to, in a two school district, two high school district, if once if one side wants something, the other one gets it. To yes. where like they kind of rise together. Whereas if you have like three, four, five, as we see in town, it's like kind of wild west. Everybody's on their own. Yeah, uh, you know, as, as someone who's uh, spent the majority of my time living in Blue Springs, yes, if you have two. One gets it, the other one gets it, uh, or something equal or somewhat equal to that sense. I mean, you know, it, it uh, in Blue Springs, in the Blue Springs district, uh, Blue Springs High School has a a turf practice field that's kind of, you know, for, for like freshmen and things like that, but it's really has a three-story tower, and that's not uh, for Jed Paulson to, uh, you know, go all Bear, Bear Bryant and stand above right. and watch practice. That's for the band director Mm. to watch band now there is no three-story tower at blue spring south uh but there is a very nice soccer facility which they have a new soccer facility at blue springs as well so um it's pretty equal um it's a lot of it depends on on what you have in terms of uh space there's just more physical land around blue spring south that uh, the district owns yeah. than there was around blue springs and really at blue springs high school uh they have almost built upon every inch in fact they there was a church it sat across the street that moved out uh, and they bought that church and tore it down. And I think it's going to be parking. Huh. <laughs> so that's, that's how things are in Blue Spring. So, uh, you know, yeah. try and do things as equally as possible and, uh, and, uh, or, you know, in terms, you know, side by side as best they can, but uh, you know, both have pools, which not, Hey, there's not a lot of school districts can, can claim that they have two high schools and two pools. Two pools. Um, yeah. Two pools is a kind of a big deal. Now, of course, South shares theirs with Grand Valley and St. Michael's, but that's a whole other story for our um, for the, know, the what swimming, our, what our swimming podcast podcasts yeah. that we're going to start here soon. Yes, um, <laughs> we'll have to go go into that. But uh, no, it's a you know with facilities, it's a you know it's a, it's an interesting thing, you know. And I get if you've got five high schools, it's tough to to build a, a home field at every school. We saw North Kansas City go go through and have they have four, and they all have home fields now. And just talking with like a guy like Ken Clemens at Oak Park and, and John Crutcher at Winnetonka, uh, Oak Park, they've maybe seen more dividends out of that home field in terms of wins than Winnetonka has. The Winnetonka's got uh, four wins this year. That home field is a huge thing. At, at mm-hmm. Blue Springs, when they split up, they split and South got their own field. Uh, they won a state championship that year. Now, that was a really good team, probably going to win anyway. Um, but having that home field is definitely something that is a, a big thing for, for schools. And I get it if you're – you know, your shiny mission or, or Blue Valley. You know, Blue Valley's got the three fields now uh, instead of just the two, which makes it a little bit a little easier. Um, I get the feeling that they'll never have five for five in Blue Valley because I think that uh, I know that when Blue Valley North redid their practice fields, there was a lot of gruff from the neighborhood about the lights and the lights being on. Um, yeah. So they don't necessarily want uh, that neighborhood doesn't necessarily want a field there. So I don't know if Blue Valley North will ever get that. Uh, Andy Sims told me he learned how to go to uh, city council meetings uh, when they were doing that work when yeah. he was at Blue Valley North. But uh, no, that's just, it's, it's different for other places. And, you know, Shawnee Mission only has the two, but they're two really nice stadiums. <laughs> yeah. so, so you can't, can't complain about that either. So that's, uh, you know, those are two of the better stadiums in the, in the city or Shawnee Mission North and Shawnee Mission South. So, yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's get to it last week. Since you're over there in Blue Springs, you're talking about Blue yes. Springs. A big matchup there last week at Blue Springs. Blue Springs, or sorry, at Blue Springs South, you had the uh, Wildcats uh, taking on the Jaguars. Close game. South prevails. What, anything yeah. about that that surprised you? Uh, no. I mean, I think, I, you know, 
I think it's a statement that one Blue Springs South is a really good football team. And I think Blue Springs is a good football team and, and they have come a long way uh, in the last year. And you can say the same thing about Blue Springs South. They were one and nine, but they were playing a ton of young players. Same thing with Blue Springs last year. Um, Blue Springs ended up with one more victory uh, than Blue Springs South last year. And that, that part of that's because they were a lower seed and got to play Truman yeah. in the first round of the playoffs where South didn't have a playoff game to get a win in. Uh, but no, they both have taken huge steps forward this year. I'd put Blue Springs South a little ahead of Blue Springs. Uh, but Blue Springs is definitely a team to keep an eye on. They got Liberty North this week. That's going to be a tough game. Uh, it was 23. It was 23 to three. Uh, and then Blue Springs kind of came back a little bit there in the, the late third quarter, and then Blue Springs South scored late to make it 30 to 20. Uh, so, you know, really a, a good game for both teams. And um, I thought it'd be a two score game. It was kind of in that, you know, I think, I think Blue Springs South is probably in that 10 to 14 point range of being better than, but in a, a rivalry game like that, I'm not stunned the way it went down. I mean, the fact that Blue Springs has been a great comeback to cut it to 23 20, and, and then South scored late to make it 30 to 20. So, uh, good, good one for South, but uh, that Blue Springs team is definitely one that uh, you've got to watch out for, especially going into the playoffs. Um, all right, over on the Kansas side, we had the game of the night, the game of the, the year maybe uh, in Kansas City, Blue Valley West and uh, Blue Valley. Great stuff on on the field and off the field, right? Because you had all the Chiefs there, not <laughs> yeah. the coaches, but the uh, the players as well. And hey, those those kids on the field, well done. Uh, Tigers and Jaguars and keeping those those luminaries in the stands for the entire game. Nobody was leaving that one as uh, Blue Valley West comes back and scores with, what, uh, 44 seconds? Uh, they they, they the got the ball with 44 seconds left in the clock. Yeah, and they uh, only took uh, 37 seconds for Tate and Aggie to get them down to the one-yard line, and they scored, you know, with, with four seconds left in the clock. And wow. uh, I'll tell you, you know, one, I want to know, did somebody – did they get the red bag chairs – at a you know a discount that they buy them in bulk because they were all sitting in those red bag chairs or did somebody have fifteen red bag chairs just sitting around for the Chiefs players well, to sit I in? Mean, the, I mean, the, the Chiefs they have didn't. a lot of money and the Blue Valley School District has a lot yeah. Of money. So yeah, either the, one of those. Could I just that's one thing that stuck out to me was like they were all sitting in the same chair, you know, like the same red bag chair. Uh, or but no, what a just quick wrote a check, sold, told somebody to go to Dick's and uh, yeah, Dick's or Academy and and uh, whoever whoever had that uh, that line there. No, uh, what a great game. First off, Blue Valley played a fantastic football game, and they came up short. <laughs> uh, yeah. They were leading that game. Uh, their quarterback, Chris Aiello, I think is how you say Aiello, his name. yeah. Um, fantastic game for him. Their offense is really starting to get it going. But then Blue Valley West just, you know, done what they do. They they can turn it on and uh, get things moving, and, and that last drive was – you know, four plays, 80 yards. I mean, or four plays to get to the one yard line. So four plays, 79 yards. And then the fifth play was the touchdown. Uh, it was, it was great to watch uh, and, and see that, that ending. And, um, you know, they played a game two weeks before against Blue Valley Northwest. It seemed like it might be the game of the year. And yeah. we're not even talking about the four overtime games, Shawnee Mission East, Olathe East. That's how, that's how crazy the finish at, at Blue Valley West was. Yeah. Is that Shawnee Mission East, Olathe East might've been the game of the year in four overtimes, but no, it's the, it's the Blue Valley West Blue Valley game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I watched that East, uh, East, East game. That was, uh, that was certainly wild there. And both teams could have won it about five times in those four overtimes. Mm-hmm. And they passed up on that. And like the East uh, eventually got the win. But I mean, are we, have you seen enough on the Kansas side in six a is Blue Valley West? Is that the best team? Is that the team to beat? I think so. I, I, I don't think they're unbeatable by any means. Um, they're going to have to play good football, especially as they get, you know, deeper uh, into the into the bracket, um, but they seem to kind of have a good combination. Uh, and it, and you, as you know, it doesn't matter what level of football you're at, if you've got a quarterback, <laughs> that can that can erase a lot of a lot of things. Yeah, yeah and, he's uh, a game changer, especially the way that that offense plays. I mean, it goes through him. I mean, yeah. he's 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 the one basically deciding what's going to happen almost each and every play. Well, and, and you know. The one thing about that final drive is, you know, he has a reputation for extending plays and running around. He didn't have to do that. That offensive line blocked and and against a defense that is one of the best in the Metro. He, he had some pretty clean pockets to throw out of and and guys got open. Uh, So that was a total team drive there that last, that last bit. So I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to short anyone on the offensive or defensive side of blue Valley West, but yes, Tate Nagy does make things happen. Um, 
Yeah, let's, let's talk about a couple of schools, one on the Kansas side, one on the Missouri side. Uh, two perennial powers who started off, what, in this case, 4-0 and 5-0, and um, but then have lost three straight. Little Valley West, uh, Northwest on the, uh, on the Kansas side, Rockhurst on the Missouri side. Is there still time for both these schools to kind of get it back and make a run in the playoffs, or have injuries and other things just kind of like maybe seal their fate? Uh, Blue Valley Northwest is definitely injuries. Um, you know, I, I watched that game with the Aquinas, and they just were undermanned. And Aquinas just kind of ran right at them. Uh, they, they need to get healthy. Um, I don't know what the, the what how that works and how that's going to happen for them if that's a possibility. Um, but they are not the same team they were the first three four weeks of the season. Uh, and that's it's the second year in a row they've had a lot of injuries, and, and that's tough. It's you know injuries kind of a lot of is it just luck. Rockhurst, mm-hmm. you know they they got into a battle with Liberty North um, that was back and forth. They're both kind of mirror image teams, not real explosive but solid fundamentally. Um, and, and if you're Rockhurst, you know, you got to, you got Salou this week to close it out. And then you go into your district with two pretty dynamic teams in Lee summit and, yeah. and Lee summit North. And then a Lee summit West team that was only four points down to Lee summit North going into the fourth quarter. That's getting better. Uh, so I, I don't know. I, you know, it's, it's tough for Rockhurst because they have to play a certain style of game. And if they can't get into that game, then, then they're going to struggle. Yeah, uh, but, the, but you know, they lost. The, the only game that they've been beaten by more than, a, you know, three points is Blue Springs. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was, you know, that kind of they, they made a lot of mistakes in that game. Um, gave up, you know, a 99 yard drive, a 99 yard touchdown. <laughs> you know, yeah. rough to kicker. They extended right, the drive. Point. The other two games, they're right there. I mean, they're right there. So, the you know, they if they get into those kind of, you know, low scoring kind of games like that, they're that's what they want. If they get into a game where they've got to put 30 points on the board, that's where they're going to struggle. So it just depends on what kind of game they can get into. Uh, that's kind of, I think they're, you know, they've got to find, they've got to, they've got to dictate what their game is. And if they can't dictate, then they're going to struggle. Uh, yeah. Struggle about a team is probably going to go six and three. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we're not, we're, we're not talking about a team that's going three and six. Right. Uh, so, you know, they'll, they should beat Salud this week. Um, but no, I, I think that those are kind of the, 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 the things that are for both those teams. I think, you know, rocks got to, got to find a way to, you know, win close games, low scoring, close games and blue Valley Northwest needs to get healthy. <laughs> That's kind of their thing. Yeah. Um, all right. So who, who should be shaking in their boots more a high seat on the five, a side with St. James potentially being like a 12 or a 13 seed, um, or a high seed on the four, a, uh, side with um, Bishop Miege potentially being like a 15 seed or, or something like that. You mean a Bishop Miege who was over heading into last week, won their first game and dropped from the 14 seed to the 15 seed? I don't know how that's possible. I guess they only won by two and the other team. And Paola won, won by, by, thir- yeah. by 13. So, you know, Paola and then were both winless and Paola was behind them in the points. Then Paola won by plus 13. We're talking, I think it's Atchison who would match up with them first. Yes. Right now. We've got a week left to go, but uh, they're, they're going to be shaking their heads in Atchison. Well, that's a Bishop Miege team that was only down 16 to 10 to Cardinal Ritter in the, in the halftime two weeks ago. So, you know, it's, I don't know. I wouldn't want to play Bishop Miege or St. James in the first round. No. Uh, you know, St. James went down to Cape in last week and, and handled Bumped them it. without. And they don't have the Tyson B short didn't play still. They're yeah. starting quarterback. So yeah. Um, so I'm looking at districts over on the Missouri side here. In cl- class five, we've got three and five Webb City ahead of five and three Raytown with the points and all that. Is that are you good with that? Is that fine or is that maybe a, a flaw in the system? Um I don't know. I don't it, it happens like that every year. There's somebody like that who's you know, everybody that that uh, Webb has lost to has got a really big winning record. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, kind of the teams that Raytown have beaten, you know, aren't very good. So it's kind of, it's kind of who you play. I, you know, Raytown's pretty dynamic. I don't know if I'm, you know, it, it I don't know if you want to play them down the line. They're, they're going to get Platte County this weekend. They'll probably come out on the short end of that. But um, that's a team, that's a team that's sneaky to me in <laughs> Raytown. <laughs> You know, I just I, I look at that that district is, you know, that four or five game possibly Web City, you know, Raytown is is a it you, it the one thing that is going to Web City and playing is a whole other deal. Mm-hmm. And if you've never been there, 
I suggest you go. I've been there once. Saw Platt County in a semifinal game there. You get there, the stands go from end zone to end zone on the home right. side, and they fill them. No matter what, they fill them. Uh, and it's, it, you know, you want to hate them because they're Web City and they won so much, and you think they're not nice people, but they're really kind of nice, and they really enjoy it. <laughs> It's going to be right. You, uh, all the towns out there, all the schools, you want, you want that, right? You yeah. That so it's, I, you know, I, I like Raytown a lot and that's a close, you know, uh, the, the problem is I don't think Raytown's going to get any bump out of this week. Cause I think they're going to go to Platte County and get beat. And I'm not yeah. saying that to disparage Raytown. Platte County is really good. Yeah. Um, you know, now the question is, can Grain Valley get up ahead of Neosho, um, who I think Web City has this week. Uh, so, you know, can they get ahead of the Osho and get a home game or are they going to go down South as well? So that's an interesting district there. Well, Ruskin and Belton will go on the road. They just don't know if they're going yeah. to Grand Valley or going to the Osho. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, it's fun. At least Missouri's trying, right? Because it is funny in that, like, all right, on the Kansas side, you have Mill Valley, who's, Ranked number one in a lot of polls in 5A. They're number two in the city in, in one poll overall of all the teams in the city. They played Lee Summit North, at, you know, Free State, late the North, late the East coming up, Gardner and all that. And they're the sixth seed, right, on the east side yeah. in, in, in 5A. And Blue Valley, who's probably played a tougher schedule than that, uh, is the seventh seed. And so it is, it's kind of, you look yeah. at it like, maybe there's, there's something that Kansas could do to like maybe make that a little more, uh, it's kind of, of the schedules and the seasons and the teams that have transpired. You know, I wasn't a fan of the point system, but we've had it now for more than 10 years. I mean, it's, it's funny how that time goes. I still like, would like the idea of your district being your conference. You play everybody, you take the top four teams. Um, you play a 10 game regular season. You kind of get rid of that, you know, first everybody making the playoffs thing. Um, but I, I, I think that ship has sailed. I think what they've done now in Missouri where they've, They've kind of gotten rid of the one eights when they've kind of, you yeah. know, they put more teams in class six. That was kind of the, the thing on that. You know, you, you had a lot of one eight games that were just not good for football. I mean, uh, you had teams getting beat by 70 and, you know, and, and just bad matchups. Yeah. There's still some of that out there, but it's not as, you know, the, the most of the ones and most of the twos are all the ones uh, and, and some of most of the twos get buys. Um, so there is an advantage of, of getting that, that number one seed in the district. Uh, you know, in Kansas, it's one to 16. So you're definitely going to have, well, outside of the Bishop Meage is a 15. Um, you're definitely going to have some just brutal games to start mm -hmm. off that first round. Now in 5A this year, th th it goes deep. And it, really, if you look at 6A on the east side too, it goes seven, eight, nine, deep too. Absolutely. Who wants to um, play Shiny Mission East in a first round game, right? <laughs> no. what, I mean, if they're an that's how, that's that's how like huge that. that old eight, the East Shiny Mission East game was last week. Yeah. Because they were both sitting at four and two, and you you had a head to head game, and Olathe East stays you know goes to five and two. Uh, it you know that's what that's why last week we called it moving you know moving week kind of thing, and yeah. that's what happened. You had a lot of that that go on. I mean, you know, Blue Spring South they kind of locked down that one spot in that mm -hmm. district, but that you know if they go lose to Lee Summit West this week, and Liberty North wins, and Liberty loses. You know they could very well be sitting in a spot where Liberty North has jumped up to the two, and now they're yeah. now they've dropped down. So, it, you know, it's it's one of those things that you know for Blue Springs out there, the biggest Liberty fans in the world this week. They want to make sure that Liberty wins and keeps that buffer between. And actually, Blue Springs, you know, they want to keep Liberty North down that 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 way as well. But I don't know. It, it's uh, each of them have. You know, I will say this: at least they at least they put them into the districts before the season starts. Illinois doesn't even do it until after three weeks into the season. And I've had people tell me, oh, that's great. And I'm like, no, you have yeah. no idea what kind of putting – putting teams based on their first three weeks of the season into yeah. some sort of districts and classification because yeah. you have no idea what a team's going to be after three weeks versus week seven, eight, and nine. Yeah. You're better off doing it before the season. You know, then you – it's more it's more fair, I guess is the way to say it. That, you know, that way. All right, let's get to it. The uh, REMAX Big Three Games of the Week this week. You can find them on uh, prepskc.com. Eventually, once uh, – once it'll be out by the time we post this, right? Yes, but yes. Let's start on the Missouri side. Uh, one we've kind of been uh, looking at uh, the last uh, few weeks or so, Lee Summit at Lee Summit North. Talk about tough schedules. Lee Summit North uh, taking on all comers. They've beaten every team this season. 
this might be uh might, might be their toughest opponent. Yeah, probably since Blue Spring South. Uh, you know, Lee Summit's playing great. Todd Miller, their coach, has done a fantastic job along with that staff. Uh, you know, that they, they are really have done everything you could ask of them. Um, they the only game they lost is a game where um probably their weakness, maybe their rush defense <laughs> was exposed by a team that's really good at running the ball in Blue Spring yeah. South. Uh, but other than that, offensively, they're fantastic. They make big plays. Um, and they're their their defense has played better the last few weeks, but you got you got to slow them down. This could be a high scoring game, uh, no doubt uh, in, in terms of both these teams. So uh, if if somebody's going to get you know it's the last chance in the regular season, so if somebody's going to get Lee Summit North, you know Lee Summit might be the team, and uh, that would be one of the biggest ones for Lee Summit in a long time uh, if they can get this. Yeah, game. what this are the Drew good? Lock era? <laughs> yeah, just is there just one undefeated team left on the Missouri side? Platte County. Platte okay. Platte County, Lee Summit North. Who else am I missing? Um, Carney, Penn Champions. Carney, hard to forget about Carney. So one in kind of each class there. Pembroke Hill, Pembroke Hill, Pembroke Hill. Yeah, so three, four, the five. Raiders. Six. Yeah, they're two. They're class two this year though. So they're two, okay. Um, Nobody right, class uh, three. Saint Pius. No, they lost to the Rockers. Lost the Rockers. Yeah. Um. Kansas side, what we have Aquinas, yep. Lewisburg. Nobody in 6A, right? No. You got some Western Kansas schools that are undefeated. No, I'm just saying, yeah, you can't see the area, though. Um, That's it. Okay. okay. Uh, there we go. Um, back to the big three. Uh, on the Missouri side, you have Oak Park at Park Hill as well. Basically, winner gets the top seed in the district. I mean, it's that simple. <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, Oak Park has has been up and down a little bit. They they had won three in a row and then they ran into Liberty last week, who kind of ran the ball right at them and got after them. And Park Hill quietly has turned in a really nice season. Yeah. They're six and two. Um, you know they beat Columbia Rockbridge. They only seem to beat Columbia Rockbridge, uh, which to the statewide riders means that Columbia Rockbridge is ranked ahead of them. To those mm-hmm. of us in Kansas City, it means that Park Hill should be ranked ahead of Columbia Rockbridge, but. Yes. Uh, there was a decision made that Columbia Rockbridge was a great team before the season started, so people have latched on to that. Um, I think they're a good team. I think Park Hill, it's third year for Andy Sims, and you're seeing that team kind of get his uh, reflection of his, you know, how he is as a coach. And offensively, they're going to throw it around. They can do that. But they're playing better defense now, and, mm-hmm. and that's finally kind of got them, uh, you know. And, and even though Andy has kind of transformed himself into an offensive guy, um, with the air raid offense that he's run, uh, he's still a middle linebacker from Fort Osage, right? Who knows how to who knows how to who knows what he wants in defense, and um, which would kind of lead me to another subject that I had a conversation with the coach about Fort Osage that with the win over Green Valley last week, uh, even though they're now starting or played a freshman quarterback in that game, uh, they got River Peppers back. Um, their defense shut down a Green Valley offense and Robert Palmer that had been running wild all season long, uh, and they got a win there. That's a dangerous team going forward. In fact, this coach told me that the last drive, you know, with getting River Peppers back, you think to yourself that Anthony Thompson could go over and just play linebacker for Fort Osage and make that defense even tougher because he's not splitting snaps between Mm -hmm. the offensive side. Except this coach told me that the last drive, they ran Wildcat with River and Thompson, with Thompson blocking for River, and his statement was, as I watched it, I wanted to call Misha and make that illegal. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's a good story. So keep an eye on Fordo stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. Long story. Sorry. A little side uh, story there, but I, I just uh yeah. So that's uh that's a team of class five to keep an eye on. And the other one on the uh, Missouri side, you have Blue Springs and Liberty North. Same deal. They battling for third, battling for second in the district. It's a big yeah. I mean, if you're Blue Springs, you can pretty much keep Liberty North right where they're at in fourth spot. Um, and you know, you don't have anything with, you know, you need Liberty to lose North Kansas city. I, don't, I, I probably would put a, a lean to Liberty in that game, uh, to move up. Um, yeah. but if you're, if you're blue Springs, do you want to play blue Springs South again? If you get, if you go in that four or five game or you want to stay in that three spot and get a week off, I mean, that's yeah. kind of what it is. And I, I like this game a lot. And I think, um, you haven't talked to any of the coaches yet as we record this. I haven't really gotten into my radio show. Uh, we're going we're to have Andy Learman on this week. Looking forward to talking to him and getting his thoughts. Because, uh, you know, he's one of those guys who will tell you what he thinks about other teams. If he thinks they're good, you know, he'll tell you. He's he, In fact, 
if there was somebody who was driving the Blue Spring South bandwagon, it would have been Andy Learn about, about this time cool. last year. Uh, it was like, hey, they're going to, you know, so he's he's always great to talk to. So I'm curious to get his thoughts on going in this game. Um, two teams that are uh, really playing well um, can, you know, run the ball and do things defensively. Two teams with two of the best kickers in the Metro, Blue Renfro and uh, William Ahern for Blue Springs, Blue Renfro for uh, uh, Liberty North. As we talk about kickers, uh, the little preview of our elite team uh, uh, focus this week is the specialist kickers, punters, long snappers, returners. Right. So uh, Cole Young and I will be doing that a uh, bit a little later today. Uh, so no, uh, this this is a game where kickers matter. Kickers mattered in the, the Rockers Liberty North game last week. You know, Blue hit a, a big couple of big ones in that. So uh, you know, as it comes down the stretch, you, you're going to find the teams that have the good kickers are going to do well. And this is a game of Liberty North and Blue Springs that could come down to those kickers. Are you hearing my dog? By the way, no. Okay, good. The dog's going nuts <laughs> upstairs. I'll I'll leave her up there. Uh, Good. Uh, let's get to the Kansas side here. Uh, Olathe East at Mill Valley. Olathe East has been the best of the five Olathe's this year. Uh, they're five and two. They won that uh, epic game over Shawnee Mission East last week. They are a um, defensive team first. I think you could talk to uh, Coach Porter. Um, but their offense is the wing T. I think it's a little bit different than the flex bone. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's still option esque. It's still kind of 1930s, right? Yeah. Uh, and then you have a Mill Valley team that's really fine itself. I mean, six and one, um, the big win over Gardner a couple of weeks ago, uh, playing their best uh, football of the season and looking to go. Yeah, we're looking to go undefeated in the um, Sunflower League for the first time ever. Hey, well, you got two teams playing their best football, two teams desperately wanting to move up or maintain where they are at in the bracket. So there's a ton of, I mean, uh, uh, besides the fact of, hey, we want to win a football game, friend, there's a lot of line for both these teams, and it, and it has nothing to do with them ever playing each other again because they're in different yeah. classes. So it's uh, it's definitely big for both of them, and uh, they've got to uh, come out and, and play tough. They both want to play good defense. They both want to run the ball. Uh, and and so it's going to be pretty hard-nosed, tough football, uh, both well-coached. Um, and so it's uh, it's a good one. Uh, if, you're, if you're either of these coaches – it's a good game, even if you lose, because it's a tough game before, you know, it's a, it's not a, hey, your yeah. starters are going to sit for a couple quarters. You know, yeah, maybe you want to get them rested. If you can come out of the game healthy, I feel like a, a good, tough game going into the postseason is is not a bad thing because you're both going to be, should be on the top half of the bracket, depending on where you finish. You, you maybe have a week next week where you have a game where you can rest some of those starters, but you, you're playing, it, it's a good test right before uh, the postseason. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Spring Hill and Lewisburg. Uh, Spring Hill in 5A, Lewisburg in 4A, Lewisburg undefeated. Spring Hill just one loss. Uh, Frontier League game, basically for the Frontier League title. Uh, Lewisburg hasn't lost a regular season game since week one three years ago. Drew Harding, their coach, has only lost one regular season game in his three-year coaching career. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't think they want to get – you know, stop that streak right there. But uh, this is going to be a tough physical game. You know, last year this game was uh, you, you went into a thing. It was going to be a, a, a tough game, and unfortunately, there was the the tailback from Lewisburg or from Spring Hill got hurt, so it wasn't the game that it was going to be. Uh, I think Spring Hill's a lot more healthy than they were this time last year, and Lewisburg's coming off a tough went over a, a, an improved Ottawa team. Um, so you know, I think that they're they know that they're going to be in a, in a dog fight again with Spring Hill, and it's become a pretty good rivalry between those two teams the last few years because they've been at the top of, the, of that league. And that's kind of, you know, it, it's it also makes it fun when it's the last game of the season if it's going down to a yeah. conference title. Yeah. Uh, last but not least here on the kids' side, we have uh, St. James and Blue Valley West. Maybe a trap game for Blue Valley West or that high last week? Uh, I would uh, – yeah, it could be. Um, and St. James is kind of lying around and wait. They go down to Capen and handle a Capen team that, uh, you know, a lot of people think is – you know, not, I mean, not as good as they've been the last couple of years, but still ranked and – uh, yeah, one of the best teams in, in Wichita. Before, I mean, yeah, one of the best the... teams in Wichita. And, uh, but no, I, St. James is a dangerous team right now. And uh, if you're Blue Valley West, you want to, uh, you know, get get your seed locked in, get this win, uh, go on from there. You, don't, you do not want to take the risk of having a second loss and falling back in with those two lost teams into that, into that pool, so to speak. You want to stay where yeah. you're at. Right. <laughs> you want to stay on? outside the pool watching the pool do not get in the pool um, of teams that, that have two losses so uh and, and you know 
talking to coach Corcoran last week, he, he basically said, you know, we're, you know, we've, we've won games, you know, where we have been in dog fights, uh, you know, because they were not get, you know, against blue eye North, they jumped out to a big lead and then let them come back. So they've, they've kind of been in every little situation. So he feels like that they, you know, they, they can play in any situation. So, you know, this is another one right here playing a team that the, you look at the record and it doesn't look great. Can't get complacent there. You can't start thinking about, you know, game winning drives. If you're blue West, you don't want to have to go 80 yards in 47 seconds again. Um, all right. Anybody on the uh, Simone award watch list that we need to add or something we haven't talked about that uh, uh, deserves some recognition here. Well, I mean, we talked about Jackson Hicks from Liberty and he keeps putting up good numbers there. I mean, I, you know, it's at this point, I think you, you've got your take naggies and, 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 you know, you look at, as far as we talked about Banks Bowen from, from Lawrence. Um, Shawnee Heights is a little, um, a little in and out um, of our area, yeah. but their, I, I, their quarterback, Aiden Scott's put up huge numbers. You got 20. Yeah, they only won one game too. I feel like that's going to be maybe the separator yeah. here for some. Yeah. They're, guys. they're kind of tough there. Um, you know, Quarterback Zane Thomas at Park Hills kind of put up, you know, quietly put up some big numbers. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's it's uh, you know, we're kind of coming down the down the home stretch here. Look at some r- rushing guys. I mean, you know, Spring Hill Patrick Stumpf is is kind of got there. He's got a thousand yards. Uh, so that's uh, kind of those yeah. guys there. But uh, you know, Gabe Fields from St. Joe Central is a, a Vandy commit. <laughs> had kind of been having a regular kind of season. Then he had a huge eight touchdown game, 400 mm-hmm. yards last week. Uh, so eight he's a guy to keep wow. eight touchdowns total. So yeah. He's he going to Vandy? He's going to Vandy. Uh, yeah. Wow. That, you know, and and that's a guy that's been keyed on, you know, and so he finally kind of broke through against Excelsior, Excelsior Springs last week. So no, it's, uh, you know, it's the field is, is coming together. Our elite team field. Yep. We're going to start narrowing some of that down here in the next couple of weeks, especially as the regular season gets done and we can, uh, you know, teams start falling off and we can get some total numbers, uh, you know, for the guys like that, especially the defense. Yeah, that's just in a couple of weeks. We'll have teams that, uh, I mean, half the teams will be done. Yes. And so that'll, you know, go for that. And, and uh, we'll, we'll get those. We'll start to, you know, revisit some position groups uh, as we get closer to announcing uh, that elite team on KSHP 41. That's right, baby. Looking, looking right. forward to that. It's going to be a, a fun week of announcing that team and, and honoring those players. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, very cool. Uh, any other games we need to keep an eye on for this, uh, this Friday night before we, well, uh, you got you know, small schools, East Buchanan, Mid Buchanan, um, in, in class two in Missouri for that KCI, uh, conference title. Uh, that's one that, that's kind of out there. That's kind of good. And, um, Washington Topeka Highland Park is a Thursday game. It's a big one. It's a big one it's in 5A. 5A. There's a lot of 5A teams <laughs> looking at that game right there. <laughs> it's a big one in 5A. You got uh, some so, yeah. valleys, some blue valleys, um, some uh, some Spring Hills. They're all looking at that game. Yeah, I I don't I don't know how easy it is to find because I found it before. You may have to go to like YouTube and search like Highland Park, but they have a really pretty good uh, webcast, and I would highly encourage yeah, people if you want nice. to watch that game. Uh, and it's from Hummer Park in 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 Topeka. Uh, and they've got and they uh, it's a good webcast because they update the score in the time. That's always key. Not all webcasts do that, even though yeah. they might have a score bug at the bottom of it. Um, but uh, no, it's a uh, it's something on Thursday night. I'll, I'll be watching a little of that since uh, there's uh, – I'm, I'm not even sure what the NFL Thursday night game is or what college games are, but I'll watch Never it. Never know until, like, it starts. Yeah. So I'm a sports director. So. Uh, <laughs> it's not the Chiefs. Oh, get, oh, I know. <laughs> better get uh, – Deion, thanks for the time. Thanks to you as well. We'll see you next time right here on Snap Talk Pod.